Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, I've been wanting a charcuterie board and just haven't had a chance to, you know, go shopping and get everything. So last minute, we kind of decided to do an at-home date night. I ordered a little date night for two charcuterie board from a lady in our town. And so, yeah, we just had that and snacked on it and watched um, some TV programs that we got caught up on. And that was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, I cooked up a lamb roast. I'd gotten this on sale at Aldi a couple months ago. It was in my freezer, so I just thawed it out. I shared how I made this before, but I'll just kind of quickly go through it tonight. So this particular lamb roast was already seasoned with rosemary and garlic and herbs, but I wanted to kind of up the flavor a little bit. So I've got some fresh garlic. I'm gonna cut those into slivers. I have some rosemary, some olive oil, and then I've got some rosemary infused sea salt that I need to use up. So I'm going to use that. So all I did was just drizzle a little olive oil over the leg of lamb, add some of that rosemary sea salt. I took, um, again, some of the garlic slivers, cut some holes into the lamb roast, and then just put the little slivers down in there. And then I popped this into a pan. I put it into the oven at 375 degrees and I baked it until it was done to our liking. Now, how long it takes depends on one, how you like your lamb, if you like it more medium, medium rare, or more well done, and how big your lamb roast is. Mine ended up taking um, about 45 minutes to an hour and I think it was like a three pound lamb roast. Now, after about 10, 15 minutes from when the lamb was put in the oven, I added in some potatoes. I just took some red potatoes that I'd washed, of course. I quartered them, drizzled them with some of that same olive oil, the rosemary, sea salt, some fresh rosemary, and some garlic powder, salt and pepper. And then I added the potatoes to that lamb roast. And again, I just cooked it until the lamb roast was done to our liking. At that point, I removed the lamb roast. I put the potatoes back into the oven along with some asparagus that I I trimmed and again just drizzled with a little olive oil salt pepper and then I cooked the potatoes and the asparagus for maybe another 15 to 18 minutes until the potatoes were done to our liking and the asparagus was nice and tender. Now, here is a picture of my plate. I forgot to get a picture of Gary's plate. He was at the gym. He ate later than I did, but he literally had the exact same thing. I let that lamb roast um, rest for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I sliced it up. And if you see little slivers of white, that's just the garlic and the lamb roast. There's nothing wrong with it. I served that with some mint jelly, and then we have the roasted potatoes and the asparagus. This was such a delicious dinner. That roast had such great flavor. And cooking the potatoes in with the lamb roast, you know, the lamb juices and fat kind of got on the potatoes they were so so good For dinner the next night, I'm making pork tenderloin with creamy Dijon sauce. I'm going to start out, though, with the side dish. Now, I have shared this before on my channel, but I wanted to share it again in case you're new. So, if you're familiar with Kristen Stepp, she's a YouTuber. Um, this is her dad's veggie casserole recipe, and it is so good. It will, of course, be linked in the description box below for you. In this pot, and I'm having the recipe, by the way, I'm going to add in a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. Now, Kristen's dad also suggests that you, like, peel and cut up a potato and put it in at this point but I prefer to use just canned diced potatoes um, but you can use your preference so I'm going to season the vegetables with some salt pepper minced onion cover that with water bring it to a boil and boil it for just about five to seven minutes if you are using raw potatoes obviously you'd want to cook this until the potatoes are tender we're going to drain that really well and then return the vegetables back to the pot I'm going to add in a little bit of butter, and then once that butter has melted, or mostly melted, I was a little impatient, didn't let it all melt, we're going to add in a can of cream of chicken soup. Next, after I get that stirred in really well, we're going to add in some crushed up crackers. Now, her dad really suggests that you use townhouse crackers. I happen to have a sleeve on hand, but I'm sure if you used Ritz crackers or even off-brand Ritz, it turn out delicious either way. <laughs> Once I've added in a little bit of those crushed up crackers, we're going to add in the sour cream. 
We're gonna mix that in really, really well. And then I'm going to add in some shredded cheddar cheese. You can, of course, shred your own. I just happen to have some of this on hand. It's pre-shredded. I need to use it up, so I'm gonna add in that. Give it a stir. And once it's well combined, we're gonna add it to a greased casserole dish. Now, my oven is set at, I think, 350 degrees. And if you see I hesitate right here, that's because I realized I forgot to add in the potatoes. Now, because I'm using canned, no worries, because they're already cooked. I just drained the can really well, and I'm gonna give them a stir right in the casserole dish. See, if you make mistakes in the kitchen, most of them can be fixed. Next, we're gonna add in some of the Velveeta shreds. This is the original flavor. We're gonna add that on top and then add the remainder of those crushed up crackers. This is going to go into the preheated oven and bake for about 40 to 45 minutes until it is bubbly and golden brown on top. And then you do wanna let this sit for about 10 minutes before you serve it up. Now for the pork tenderloin. I didn't really follow a recipe for the tenderloin itself. I just took one that I'd bought on BOGO at Publix. I cut it in half because just half of it was enough for us for a meal. I've already seasoned the first side. In this skillet, I've got some avocado oil. This is on about medium high heat. I am going to just sear the pork tenderloin. We're not trying to cook it all the way. You can use whatever seasonings you want for this. Tonight, I decided to try this Kinder's buttery herb and garlic along with just a tiny little bit of salt and pepper. And then like I said, yeah, just sear it on all sides and then once it is golden brown on all sides I'm going to transfer it to a baking dish. I lined the baking dish with aluminum foil just to make cleanup easy. I baked this at the same temperature that the veggie casserole was baking and again how long it takes really depends on how how big and how thick your pork roast is, but you just wanna cook it until it's at least 145 degrees internal temperature. I like to cover it with aluminum foil and let it rest for 10 minutes before I slice it up to be served. Now, I just recently shared this creamy Dijon sauce. I'll link it in the description box below for you just to quickly walk through it. So this is the skillet I cooked the pork in. Here is what I'm gonna use to make for the sauce. I've got some heavy cream. I'm using plant-based cream because that's what I've got on hand. And then we've got some Dijon mustard, salt and pepper. You can use whatever fresh or dried herbs you've got on hand or what sounds good to you. I've got some fresh parsley. And then I have this can of crescent rolls in my fridge that I really need to use up. So I'm gonna bake those up for us to go along with the pork and the casserole. So what I did was I added the cream and the Dijon mustard to the pan on medium heat. I cooked it um, for, I don't know, maybe about five minutes. You just wanna cook it until it gets a little thick. And you do wanna make sure that you scrape the bottom to get all those yummy bits of pork. And then once it's thickened, you just add in your salt, pepper, and herbs, and then that's it. The sauce is done. Here are those finished crescent rolls. Once they came out of the oven, I put a little butter on them. And then here are the plates. So we've got some of the pork, that sauce. I added some of the fresh parsley on top. We have the veggie casserole, the crescent roll, and this dinner was delicious. It's so good. Now, obviously in order, you know, with the sauce only having like basically two ingredients, cream and Dijon mustard, you kind of have to like mustard um, to like the sauce. It is mustard for it, of course. Um, but this sauce would also be really good on chicken. And I think actually the original recipe called for chicken but I've made it with pork and it's so good. Now I did have a couple crescent rolls left over and I wanted to use them up so I made these quick little yummy treats. I saw this on Faith Food and Family on Amanda's channel a couple of years or so ago. These are so stupid easy and delicious. All you do is take crescent roll dough, unroll them into the triangles and then you add chocolate chips. You can use mini chocolate chips or regular whatever you've got on hand roll them back up, bake them according to your package instructions, and then once they come out of the oven, sprinkle them with some powdered sugar. So easy, so delicious. And we've also made them where instead of the chocolate chips, we use Nutella. Oh, chef's kiss. So, so good. Dinner the next night was off a meal plan, but I had went to Aldi this week and picked up a bag of red bag chicken and just kind of copycat Chick-fil-A. Sounded good this night. So I've got that red bag chicken. I also have some frozen waffle fries. I've got some just hamburger buns. And then I'd picked up some of the Polynesian and Chick-fil-A sauce. I cook the waffle fries and the um, chicken patties in the air fryer. And then yeah, 
that was it. I just assembled the sandwiches for mine. I keep it pretty simple. I just like the chicken patty, some Polynesian and the bun. For Gary, I add cheese, lettuce, tomato, and the Chick-fil-A sauce. And then I love dipping waffle fries in um, Polynesian sauce. It's so good. So dinner the next night, Gary was out running errands and he just grabbed Chipotle for us while he was out. Here's what we got. He got a half chicken, half steak burrito. And then I've been wanting to try their steak quesadilla. So I got the steak quesadilla. I added fajita vegetables. I got a side of the pico, the corn salsa, and then I got some of their honey chipotle vinaigrette. And I mixed that with some sour cream and dipped the quesadilla in it. And it was really good. For the last dinner in this week's video, we did a yo-yo night or you're on your own. This is the night before we were leaving to go to Florida. And so I was just trying to get rid of leftovers. I ended up having some of the leftover lamb and the vegetable casserole. And then for Gary, this day we had um, eaten lunch at Taco Bell. I just ran through the drive-thru. We got some of their online specials, like I think the cheesy gordita crunch box and the something else box. Um, but so we had a couple of the soft tacos left over from those boxes. And then I like to get, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's on their like cravings value menu. It's their little cheapy, cheesy rice and bean burrito, I think is what it's called. But I like to add steak to it. It's like a buck to add the steak. I had that leftover, so that's what Gary had uh, for his dinner. And yeah, that was it. Got rid of some leftovers. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video and got some new dinner ideas to try from it. If you did like it, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.